Cryptocurrency. That's the topic of the video today, so it's gonna be controversial. Now, the rise in cryptocurrency over the past decade has invited a lot of criticism and doubt. But my view on the matter is, if you can make money from it, I want to know about it. So this video is not meant to be a recommendation to buy or sell cryptocurrency. I just hope to give you a basic understanding of how cryptocurrencies work and why it's so valuable. So without further ado, let's begin. To understand how cryptocurrencies work, we need to figure out why it was created in the first place. Now, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are just like any other currency, like the US dollar or the Japanese yen. Cryptocurrencies are invented to solve the problems related with fiat money, which is the money we're using right now. Now, if you think about it, how do you know that this 10 ringgit bill right here is worth 10 ringgit? I mean, it's just a piece of paper. It's not limited in quantity like gold. You see, you think this paper bill is worth 10 ringgit because the government assigns a legal status to this bill, telling you it's worth 10 ringgit. And so we as a society trade goods using paper money based on our trust in the government. This fiat currency is centralized, which means that its value is determined and can be manipulated by a central authority. In this case, the government and the central bank. This brings us to one obvious problem with fiat money, which is how can we trust that the authority can manage the money properly? One extreme example of such a failure can be seen in Venezuela, where the ruling government had a bad habit of giving out money to secure votes. The problem with printing out more money is that it decreases the value of your currency. When all of that new money was worth less and prices of goods went up, the government thought it was a great idea to print out even more money. This vicious cycle led to hyperinflation, where prices of goods skyrocketed and the currency plummeted. The currency became so worthless, the government was forced to ditch the old currency and replace it with a new one, which didn't work at all as the new currency also lost its value just as quickly. This just goes to show how a corrupt authority given complete control of money can completely screw you over. Another problem with fiat currency is in the way we keep track of transactions. Nowadays, paper bills are becoming a thing of the past. You transfer money online, you pay for things using e-wallets and credit cards. You're using digital currency, which is nothing more than a piece of data on a computer. The central authority that keeps track of all this money will be the banks. Now, when you cash in money into your bank account, your bank will update that transaction in their database. When you send money to someone else, your bank and their bank will verify the transaction and update their individual records accordingly. The problem with such a system is that it can be easily manipulated, either by the banks themselves or by hackers out to get your money. In the past, banks have been busted for creating fake accounts to increase their profit artificially, and hackers have successfully stolen hundreds of millions of dollars by getting past a bank's security measure. And so the first issue is similar, which is how much can you trust the central authority, which in this case is the banks. The second issue is with security, which is not really the bank's fault as hackers become smarter and more advanced. These issues are exactly why cryptocurrencies were created in the first place. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are designed as decentralized digital currencies, which simply means that instead of relying on one central authority to keep track of transactions, Bitcoin relies on a network of different individuals to keep the system running. Think of it like this. You and your friends live together and promise to split living expenses equally. David here takes charge of paying rent and utilities and keeps track of who owes how much. This is a centralized system because all of you will trust David on keeping the correct record. But what if David lies and said he paid a higher bill? Or if Amy sneaks in and changes his records? To avoid these situations, all of you agree to keep your own set of records. 
When David pays the rent, he has to show his receipt to all of you. Each of you will inspect this receipt to make sure it's real, and if it is, all of you will record this transaction in your own record books. When you pay David your share of rent, you also go through the same process to have everyone verify and record your transaction. This system is transparent and fair, and make it very difficult to cheat. Because when you all sit down to compare records, any record that is different from the rest will obviously be fake. In reality, Bitcoin works in the same way. When you want to transfer your Bitcoins to someone else, you have to announce this into the Bitcoin network, which is made up of hundreds of thousands of computers waiting to verify your transaction. Your Bitcoin wallet will be tied to a public key. You can think of this as something like your account number. To make a transaction, you need to prove that you are the owner of this wallet by signing your transaction using a digital signature. But this isn't any old scribble. It's much more secure than that. In order to create this digital signature, you will need to use your private key, which is like a password that only you have access to. Your computer then runs this combination through some math wizardry to create a unique digital signature. The process to generate this signature is so complicated that it's nearly impossible for anyone to generate your digital signature without knowing your private key. They'd have to make random guesses, which will take forever because there are two to the power of 256 possible digital signatures out there. To make it even more secure, each transaction will have a different transaction data. And so a completely new digital signature will be generated even though you're using the same private key. So even if someone guessed the correct signature, when they try to use that signature to make a new transaction, it will be rejected because a new signature is required for every new transaction. So once you've signed your transaction, the computers on the Bitcoin network will receive your public key, transaction data, and unique digital signature. These computers will then run this combination through more math wizardry. And the result of this computation will simply be true or false. If all the information you provided is correct, the result of this function here will read true. And so your transaction is verified and added to everyone's database. If any of these inputs were wrong, the result of the function will read false, and your transaction will be rejected and no one will record it. That's basically how Bitcoin transactions are recorded. New transactions will be verified by everyone on the network and added to a transaction block, which is like a page on a book. However, since there are multiple computers verifying so many transactions, at some point, everyone needs to cross-check their work to make sure it's correct. This is why once a certain number of transactions is reached, all transactions in a specific block needs to be verified before opening a new block to record new transactions. And so the entire Bitcoin transaction history is referred to as the blockchain. Each block contains a list of transactions, and these blocks are chained together. Blockchain. The way that each block is verified requires these computers on the Bitcoin network to again perform math wizardry using what's called a cryptographic hash function. In this case, it's a SHA-256 function. If everything in the block checks out, this function will return a magic string of numbers that allows the computer to create a new block. To generate this magic number through the SHA-256 function requires a lot of computational work. In fact, it's designed to take at least 10 minutes to solve this function, no matter how many computers are working on it at the same time. So to reward computers for doing all this work, the first computer that manages to create a new block is given a block reward in the form of newly created Bitcoins. So Bitcoins are only created when new blocks are created, and the number of Bitcoins awarded in each block is designed to decrease as time goes on. This is done to limit the supply of Bitcoin, so it's more like gold and not like paper money. 
This is why computers that record and verify transactions and blocks are called miners. Essentially, anyone with a computer and an internet connection can sign up to be a Bitcoin miner. The responsibility of a Bitcoin miner is to simply verify each transaction and add it to a block. Once that block is full, you have to verify that block in order to create a new one. Since all of these blocks are chained together, it becomes nearly impossible for any individual Bitcoin miner to cheat the system and add a fake block. Because a fake block incorrectly announced to the Bitcoin network will eventually be discovered and eliminated when everyone compares their blocks. And that's how Bitcoins work. Basically, it's another form of currency. But unlike the Malaysian ringgit or US dollar, it is not created or controlled by any government or central authority. Bitcoin relies on blockchain and cryptography technology to verify transactions and create new Bitcoins. This makes Bitcoin a decentralized currency, which eliminates the risk of corruption, oversupply, and security issues. Cryptocurrency fans are hoping that this new and exciting currency will become the money that we use in the future, which could potentially make our fiat money and banking system completely obsolete. Now, when you buy Bitcoins, all you're doing is exchanging your currency to a different form of currency, which is why the Bitcoin exchange is open 24-7. Now, short-term traders will aim to earn the difference between these exchange rates, while long-term investors will hodl. These investors hope that someday people will realize the advantage of using Bitcoins and just use it as regular money, increasing the demand for Bitcoin and driving the prices up. So that's all I have for you today. It's a bit of a long one, but I had so much fun researching into cryptocurrencies and it really was an eye-opener. Like I said, this is not a recommendation to buy or sell cryptocurrencies, but more of an educational breakdown to show you what the hype is all about and how it can potentially change the way we use money in the future. This new technology shows a lot of promise, but it does present a big threat to powerful players like governments or banks. So it's really difficult to say whether it has the ability to break their control to be more widely used by the public. As always, if you found this video useful, hit that like button for the great YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more investing, personal finance, all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!